Hi, Wiggly Wiggly. Mm. I know, it's fun, huh? Hi, Wiggly Wiggly. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Book Babies Online. We have a lot of fun planned for you today. We are emphasizing playing. As you may know, if you've been following along, this month we have been doing a focus for each week. We talked about reading. We talked about we didn't talk about reading. We talked about singing. We talked about talking. This week we're talking about playing. Next week we're talking about reading. And then we're talking to spend, uh, I think that's our last one. Because then we're into September and we're into our break. Book Babies will be taking a hiatus during September to reconsider our plans and to re-examine virtual programming as the pandemic continues and we are unable to offer in-person programming. Ayons. Ayons. <laughs> Hee hee hee, kisses. Now I have a very rowdy assistant today, which is great since we're talking about playing and playtime. So let's get started with our welcome song. We like to start the same way every time, even when we do weeks of extra special fun things. So, Baby V, can you come down to Mommy for the welcome song? Here we go. Good morning, our sweet baby, baby, baby. Good morning, our sweet baby. How are you today? And good morning, our sweet mommy, mommy, mommy. Good morning, our sweet mommy. How are you today? And good morning, our sweet baby, baby. Baby, good morning, our sweet baby. baby. How are you today? And good morning, our sweet friends, friends, friends. Good morning, our sweet friends. How are you today? Oh, Ooh, good morning, everyone. Now we're talking about playing today, and let's go ahead and get a little bit of a working definition of playing. Because, as you may have noticed if you've watched previous book babies in this series, playing is kind of intrinsic. Much like singing and talking are intrinsic to how we interact with very young children, playing is often intrinsic. So how do you know if you're doing it? Well, first things first, playing can be understood as an activity that is either imaginative or kinesthetic or otherwise oriented towards experimenting and interacting with the environment without necessarily a structured goal. That's unstructured play. There's more structured play in things like games, games and sports and other stuff. But right now, my assistant is doing a great example of a sort of environmental play. She's got a toy, and she's figuring out what she can do with it. And so right now we're in the bonk bonk phase of play, bonk bonk, which is a great game for very young children. A lot of playing for babies and toddlers is really about getting to know the environment, getting to know their body and what they can do in it. So playing again, it's unstructured, it's imaginative, and it's interactive without being strictly reading or a book or with a goal. It's not eating, even though sometimes we play while we eat. It's not singing, even though sometimes we sing while we play. It's not just talking, although we definitely talk while we play. Again, all of these literacy focused activities, they overlap, they build on each other, and they work together very nicely. So let's play a little something that also is going to involve singing a little bit. So we've done a song before where we do one little, two little bubbles. I like to emphasize that songs are for you. And now we're going to play a little game of tap, tap, tap. So one little, two little, three little rings, four little, five little, six little rings, seven little, eight little, nine little rings, ten little rings go tap, tap, tap. Now I'm sort of using this as bait to gently draw my goofy toddler away from a book she's super into right now. But you might, with a younger baby, tap things where they can see them, or gently tap baby to make the play a little bit more kinesthetic, a little bit more about getting to know your body. Now, another way to play for very young babies, I like to talk about is playing with the blankies. 
You can play simple games like peekaboo, <laughs> And some babies like to hide, and some babies like it when you hide. Oh, where's mommy? Can you find mommy? <gasps> you found me! <gasps> now, are, is my baby going to hide? <gasps> where's my baby? Where is my baby? There she is! Oh. And this is a great game for very young children because it encourages them to think about their environment. It builds on those object permanence pathways that are developing in that three to six month range. <laughs> Another fun game with a blanket for very young babies can just be Baby Burrito. And it is exactly what it sounds like. You wrap a very young baby up. This is too wild of a baby to play Baby Burrito anymore. We've got little baby popcorn right here hopping all over the place, hopping and popping all over the place. But very young babies can be wrapped up as a burrito and gently rolled a little bit from side to side. And that can be a fun way to make uh, no. tummy time a little more engaging for them. And it can also, for babies who are still very into being swaddled, it's sort of a way to play and do something a little looser while still giving them that comforting feeling of, I'm still wrapped up, I'm still nice and warm, and mom or dad or other caregiver is still right there with me. So yeah, Baby Burrito is a great game for very young babies. And you can graduate to peekaboo and also do something as simple as just play with the blanket. Lots of blankets have textures or ribbons or ties, different things that can be an interesting thing to just sort of playfully explore and experience as textures. Play is again. Da, 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 da. Now you're doing tap, tap, tap. Very good. It's intended to, it's intended to be unintentional. It's sort of freewheeling and lets a child just explore and interact with their environment. And you, you are a part of their environment. Bonk, bonk. <laughs> and as they get bigger, they'll do more yeah. robust and rowdy experiments. So, are you ready for another way to play, baby? Let's play with music. Now music is, as always, a fun thing to do. And if you happen to have any instruments at home, it can be a great idea to incorporate that into how you play with your child. If you have something they can strum, no. that's a great way to play. You can strum and play with the ukulele. Me. No. You're talking about the bow. We have a violin in the house, and Baby is very into the, the bow and likes to play with that, too. And sometimes she pulls the bow across the strings, and sometimes she just wants to carry it around and wave it like an interesting stick. And both of those are beneficial. <laughs> Making sounds is a part of learning how to express ourselves. Do we have a wet diaper? Is that what you're telling me? Or are you hungry and want to eat chickpeas? Don't know yet. The other fun thing about playing with the bow in that arm-waving way is a lot of play is just about getting to know your body. It's about the mechanical experience of having a body and figuring out what you want to do with it. Do you want to wave your arms? Do you want to shake your booty? Do you want to kick your feet? Play is a chance to explore those options. It's a chance to get to know your body, and that's very beneficial. It's beneficial for development, it's beneficial for growth, it's beneficial for strength, and we just continue to find lots of ways in which playing benefits a developing child. Very young children benefit from play as much, if not more, than older children who benefit from play in huge ways, especially social no. play. No. Now, we're all struggling with how exactly to get children opportunities to play with other children right now. <laughs> <clears throat> because we're living with a pandemic. And I know that's a concern for many of you. No. I'd really recommend ah. as much as possible. Ah. Oh, you're hungry? We have a bowl here that is empty, and we are a hungry baby. Oh, dear, oh, dear. We'll have to call our dad. Can you go call dad and say, Dad, we're hungry. We need chickpeas. Huh. You want to go talk to your dad and tell him, I need these chickpeas post-haste? Okay. So, I encourage you to be your child's playmate, especially with very young children. Finding ways to play is really important.
sometimes is going to be as simple as rolling your child around on a bed, picking them up and dropping them, doing those fun kinesthetic things that help your body, your baby to experience their body and yours. And sometimes it might be more complex. Sometimes you'll invent a little game Mama. together. A little... Mama. Hi, baby. Did you get the bowl of chickpeas? Do you want to come sit with Mama while you eat them? You want to stand right there and see your own beautiful self while you eat your chickpeas? Okay. A game we've been playing is the game Secret Cave. And the way this game works is you lay down on the bed and you pull up the blankets so you're in the secret cave, and then you can come out of the secret cave. And this is, again, games are just a chance to express, experiment with your environment, and experiment with your body to have fun. Hi. Nice waving, sweet stuff. Nice waving to our friends. So when we play a game like Secret Cave, we use what's in our environment, the blankets on the bed, to experiment with what it feels like to be hidden in the dark and then out in the light, and to use our body to push on the blanket and see what that feels like. And we have fun. We are silly in our secret cave. We might tickle in our secret cave. Or we might get <gasps> oh, so sleepy in our secret cave and go to sleep. Yeah. yeah. The play is always for fun. And having fun is a human capacity that your child has and you can help them develop by finding what is fun for them. Experimenting with different kinds of play can be really interesting. You might be surprised and children will change. This baby used to really like to play um, a game with her toys where she threw them into her crib or out of her crib. And we have moved on from that to now dressing our toys in baby clothes. It's, it's exciting to see how your child's interests will change over not a lot of time, especially in that six to 18 month period, as their physical capacities change radically, what's going to be fun play for them will also change radically. They'll want to begin to do things like roll and crawl and might experiment with climbing and tumbling they may insist on running marathons when you're in the middle of a story time. And that's why Book Babies tends to end for toddlers around this age. Yeah, I'm, I've got an assist, assistant who really wants to escape. So we're going to see about a little bit of roughhousing, a little bit of active play. So my baby is about 21 months old. She has strong head control and lots of muscles. So we can get away with some pretty bouncy play. And I'm going to show you some of our favorites. Okay, baby. It's time to do baboon. <gasps> Are you ready to play baboon? Are you ready? So this is a common behavior to signal playtime. It's playtime. Do you want to come play with me? Do you want to come play with me? Let's try. Let's see if we can convince our baby that pop, pop, pop is just as good as climbing over the gate. Pop. 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 Oh, ho, ho, ho. that was fun. You want to go out very much, but I can only do up and upside down. rolling as a way to get that inversion, to get that experience of being tilted or upside down or in a new orientation. I said there's lots of benefits, lots of benefits to going upside down in terms of developing balance, developing spatial awareness, and also the interaction of falling in a safe way. 
is really important for developing our sense of balance and gravity, our relation to our environment. Are you ready for another little up down? So this is another gentler version of up down. We can go up and down. <laughs> and up and down. <laughs> You'll notice that I'm doing a lot of silly voices. Silly voices can help exaggerate and expand signal that we are playing. <coughs> Having a play tone of voice is really useful because, again, your child is learning to communicate <coughs> while you play. <coughs> that's right. Playing with your hand. <coughs> and that's a purple ring. And so the way you communicate signals both with your body and your voice that this is playtime. Having a distinct playtime voice that's a little higher, a little bouncier, a little sillier can help when you need to have a serious business voice. I'm not going to do it right now so I don't confuse her, but the more you can, ex you can emphasize when I'm talking in this silly voice, we are playing, we are playing. I'm not really going to eat you, I'm just going to say, delicious baby food. <laughs> and pretend to eat them up. It's been shown that for children who struggle with aggression, they often struggle to identify when someone is signaling play and someone is signaling aggression. And so they can overreact, they can overcompensate and end up doing aggressive behaviors when really what was being invited was an opportunity for some physical play. And so by modeling those behaviors in kind of clear, exaggerated ways, you're helping your child succeed socially and have opportunities to play with other children successfully when that is, of course, safe for you. For now, you get to be playing. And so you get to model when we play, we're a little bouncier, we're a little higher, we're a little sillier. And we might say things like, I'm going to eat you. But we say it in our playtime voice. And that will be a nice, clear distinction from your serious business voice. Time to eat another chickpea? Okay. All right, we just did a little bit of rowdy play. Let's do a little bit of gentle play. Now, this is a little bit, again, I want to show you how play can fit into lots of times of the day. Hop. Hop, hop. 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 And one of the more relaxing times of day is when you are reading together. So this is an example of what I call a book you can play with for a long time. All books start out as toys when we're not really looking at words and pictures yet, we're just looking at color contrast. But this book is called Where is Baby's Belly Button? And it has flaps that a child can move and then point to the different body parts. And you can point to the body parts on baby. And this is sort of a fun way to play with the book and make it again not just be about itself, but about the environment and our body and the way those all interact. Play is a, a mode of learning and experimentation, especially for very young children. What do you see in the back? Is that a dinosaur? No. Is that a duck? Quack, quack. No. And those are the bubbles. That's right. Where are baby's hands? Can you find baby's hands? Oh, there they are, under the bubbles. Now you may notice that there's a lot of spatial words as we play, and that is very true. Apple. One of the big benefits of play is learning about space, because it's so much about our body apple. and its interactions with apple. the environment. Apple. They're thinking about apples, I understand. Apple. So learning concepts like up, down, over, under, in, up. out, up. 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 up and down. Uh. A lot of those concepts we get from playtime. So we learn what up, up is, and we learn what down, down, boom, down is. Up, up. And we learn to express what we prefer. Because, again, play is a great way to communicate. When you communicate with your body as well as your environment and your words, you're really giving your child the full experience of human expression. Play is great. You want to sing and play? Okay. How about we do another little singing game? Now, uh, when I was young, one of the only sort of sing-song games we still played on the playground was Red Rover. But there's also simple games like... 
Mm -hmm. And then there are books like this where you can talk and play with the book. And <clears throat> I like that. you can also just make things up. Now, some of you may be feeling like, I'm not creative enough to just make up a song. First of all, of course you are. You can definitely do it. But secondly, you don't have to be an exemplary songwriter to have a fun song for your baby. It can be as simple as purple bowl, purple bowl, chickpeas in a purple bowl, and you roll them around, roll them around. So again, we're experimenting with our environment. It impacts our body because we're holding the bowl and it uses objects in our environment in a new way. Just a simple way to kind of experiment and play. This baby loves songs, so we end up doing a lot of songs while we play. Yeah! Yeah, she's wiggling and dancing because that's her favorite way to play. You may have a child who is a little less intensely kinesthetic while they play. You want to look at the book again? And they may enjoy doing something like moving their stuffed animals from one container to another container. They might like... Like playing with you with more traditional clapping games like patty cake patty cake or open them shut them those are simple little singing and clapping games for a child who's perhaps not as old and not as rowdy but also for a child who just preferentially isn't quite so zoom zoom again there's no wrong way to play unless you're getting hurt or not having fun if you're not getting hurt and you're having fun then you're doing play right Behind the cat, baby's feet. Bye. Hi, cats. Up. Up. Can you find baby's hands again? Oh, you're thinking about bubbles and the dinosaur. Want to look at that dinosaur? Mm hmm. There's baby's hands under the bubbles. Under the bubbles. So. Let's look for baby one more time. Can you find baby? Now this book, in its last page, has the game we talked about at the beginning as being a great game for very young children. Peekaboo! Where we hide under a blanket, baby hides, or mommy hides, and then reappears. There's baby! It can be fun to see playing in lots of contexts. You see the wagon, and the ball, and the bear. These are toys that you might have in your home, and you can talk about those connections while you play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Meow. Meow. Thinking about cats and songs. Funny little rowdy baby. Do you want to find the baby? Where is baby on this page? <gasps> Under the blanket! There's that baby! Bye, bye baby. Mm -hmm. Bye, bye. Would you like to hide, baby? <gasps> Where's my baby? Mm -hmm. There she is! Mm. Very good. And there's mm. the wagon. Mm hmm. Wagons pull things outside, you're right. Now, would you like to do another little bit of playtime? Would you like to play with a ball? I wanted to talk about playing with a ball because playing with a ball is another one of those things that it strikes you as too simple to be true, but it's perfect. Basically, a ball is a great toy, and that's why it sticks around. Because for very young children, it's especially these kind of old balls where they're very grabbable, it encourages very young babies to grasp and roll things. And if they're brightly colored, it can help them as they're developing their contrast vision, seeing more colors, seeing more details. <laughs> and then as your child gets older, they can roll the ball, throw the ball, kick the ball, do all kinds of fun things with the ball. And then I like these balls because they're fairly apartment friendly. They're less likely to break things. They have a lot of give. They're safe to chew. Mm -hmm. Thank you for modeling how safe they are to chew. And that's an important consideration. Play is valuable, but again, there are only two rules to play. Have fun and don't get hurt. So when you give your child something to play with and experiment with, you should be confident that it's not going to hurt them if they bite it or if they rub it on their face because those are two things that are very likely to happen. As we're learning how to use our senses, we kind of try to use our senses for everything. What is it? 
What does it sound like if I put a ball on my ear? What does it smell like if I put a ball on my nose? What does it feel like if I rub a ball on my face? What does it feel like? I'm just gonna try it. I'm just gonna try it. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, ball on mommy's nose. Ball on mommy's face. Ball on mommy's head. That's all right. Bye. Bye bye, scarf. No, I'm gonna leave it. I like it. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. Silly <laughs> boys. Silly boys. Silly boys because we're players. Now, gentle baby. Thank you for also modeling. We have to show when we're going into more serious work. And that's when the voice comes down. It gets slower. It gets less bouncy. Because I don't want you to pull on my head. That's not a fun way to play. But you know what is a fun way to play? Ball on your head. <gasps> a ball on your head. A ball on your tummy. A ball on your tummy. A ball on your head. Are you going to eat the ball? Arr, arr, arr. Chomp, chomp, chomp. So again, this is a, a nice example of sort of using an object in your environment to play and talk about baby's body, talk about what baby's thinking. And as you're, when your baby's very young, mostly it's going to be you talking. Mm. But just keep it up, and soon they will be telling you all kinds of things. They'll be talking to you about, yes, this is my head. That's your head. Mm. Here's mommy's nose. Yeah. Mommy's hair. You're very into this scarf today. So again. Can you point to your nose? Do you know where your Yeah, there's your nose. And as your child learns more and more more and more words, they'll be able to communicate with you not just with their gestures about different things, but also with their words about different Ow. things. Dad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you see your hands? Those are your hands. Very good. Yeah. Yummy hands. Yummy hands. So it's just about time to go. The other exciting thing about play is that play just never stops, especially with toddlers. Um, when we do story time in person again, we definitely will want to talk about how do we get toddlers together to play. But I wanted how, to give you a few how. key takeaways for play today. Play starts as early as you want to, and I, the earlier the better. For very small children, a blanket is a really great way to begin doing experimental play with the environment, encouraging them to feel safe while also exploring. As you get older, your child gets older, books and simple toys like a ball or some blocks can be a great choice. When your child is even older, in that 10 to 18 or 24 month range, just playing with stuff you have around can be a great way for them to learn about the environment. They're going to be really curious about what you have. But you just want to make sure at that point that it's still safe if they decide to experimentally chew it or rub it on their face. Because they will continue to do that, possibly until they're significantly older. Uh. Now, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a relaxing, winding down song. I like to begin and end the same way every week. One more friendly reminder, we are going to be taking a pause from Book Babies come September to review our procedures, to review our process, and figure out how we can best keep serving you as the library remains closed during the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's go ahead, baby, and we're going to rock our baby every day. Can you come sit with mommy for the rocking the baby song? Can you come on over for a rock rock? And kiss kiss? Kiss kiss like this? Thank you for joining me this week. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Rock your baby every day. Dip and swing and swoop and sway. Rock your baby every day. It will chase your cares away. Rock your baby every day. Dip and swing and swoop and sway. Rock your baby every day. It will chase your cares away. <sighs> Very good. Bye. Bye bye. That's right. That was the bye bye song. My clever little assistant. Mwah. I bye. love you. Thank you for saying bye bye to our friends. We'll see you next week, guys. Have a great day.